Hey, this is Megan and Stacy with another What We're Cooking and Eating Now bonus episode. In addition to our regular weekly episodes, twice a month, we give you a real-time rundown of what we're cooking for our families. In each of these episodes, we'll walk you through one recipe and then list five others. All in, you get six easy weeknight dinner ideas that we've tested. You can use our ideas as inspiration or literally turn them into your meal plan for next week. We share the links for all the recipes mentioned in our free community, which you can join by going to didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. Sometimes I do wonder if it would ever be okay for me to throw in not a dinner recipe. I'm going to shout out one today. But before I share my what my family's cooking and eating now, I want to hear from you, Stacey, because you're fresh from vacation and it seems like from your Instagram inspired to be cooking for your family. So what have you cooked for your family this week and how has it been going? Okay. So my kids are inspired. (laughs) I know that I am inspired. Okay. I will say, I will say that going on vacation definitely gave me a little bit of a respite and I'm always amazed at how much that makes a difference. Yeah. Like I am like not, oh, I can't believe I have to cook dinner which is 100% where I was before we left for vacation. So taking a break is good. Not everyone can take a vacation in any given moment. But I do think it's a reminder that if you're really, really feeling down on cooking, giving yourself a break is okay. And it really can replenish you in a way that helps you get back to it. Because guess what, people? Spoiler alert. It never ends. (laughs) It never ends. You are fully back to it. Yes. I am fully back to it. So while we were away, my boys made a list that I shared on Instagram. A list of demands, basically. (laughs) Handed it over. They literally took my phone and typed it in. And they asked for the following. Arepas con queso, my fried chicken sandwich, my arroz con pollo, carbonara, bolognese and then they wrote to order italian korean fast food so <laughs> yep okay so some of those are definitely feel inspired by your trip to Colombia, but then some of those feel like home comfort food yes totally yes. so i've only been home for three days i haven't like been able to go through this entire list so the next time we do one of these episodes I will go through the rest of it because I really am planning on just cooking this through to make them happy. We have, I'll have you know, ordered fast food. They are very excited. Yes, they had Taco Bell the other day and they're very much looking forward to going to McDonald's. I also added something. They were a little bit annoyed that like I threw in something that wasn't on this list, but it was inspired by our trip because I'm still very much feeling the like Colombian food thing. Let's start with arroz con pollo. That isn't particularly Colombian, but it's in the same sort of, you know, Central South American vein. I used a recipe from Winter Winter Chicken Dinner, my cookbook. There was a lot of arroz con mariscos in Colombia because we were in Cartagena for part of our trip, which is by the Caribbean Ocean. So same idea with seafood, but my kids don't love seafood, so they wanted the chicken version. My recipe is inspired by um, a classic Puerto Rican version, and it's super easy. So you take some bone-in, skin-on chicken, and you brown it. Then you pull it out of the pot, and then into that rendered fat that you've also added some oil to, you're going to add a lot of garlic, a chopped onion, a chopped red pepper, a chopped green pepper. You sweat those for a little bit. Then you add a bunch of spices, smoked paprika, cumin, coriander, salt, pepper, oregano. I think that's everything. I might be missing one thing. But season it up, let those herbs and spices sort of open up, bloom them. Then you're going to add a cup of beer, a cup of chicken stock, and a cup of diced tomatoes with their juices. Get that all going. Let it reduce just a tiny bit. Then a cup of white rice. And then put the chicken back, you know, stir the white rice so that it isn't clumping together. It's all distributed. And then you put the chicken that you've browned on each side, but it's not cooked through all the way. 
back in the pot, skin side up. And you want to nestle it so that the skin is going to steam. It's going to lose some of its crisp. But I really like to nestle it so that the chicken is submerged in the liquid and kind of nestled in the rice that's going to expand. But the crispy skin is still kind of exposed to the air. Mm -hmm. So that preserves a tiny bit of the crisp. But like I said, it will steam. Cover it. Let it cook about 30 minutes. And then when you uncover it, all the liquid has absorbed into the rice. It's cooked. The chicken has finished cooking. Then you're going to add about a cup of frozen peas. And what else do I finish it with? Oh, and the olives. Oh my gosh. Chopped green olives. I just take like a jar of olives stuffed with pimentos and chop them up. But sometimes you can find them pre-chopped already or like an olive salad works fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. So you add the peas and the olives. You turn off the heat, you close the lid, you let it sit for about five minutes so that the peas, you know, cook through. And then you lift it up again. And also in that five minutes, the rice fluffs up, like fluffs and like steams a little bit more, which is really nice. Then you uncover it. You finish with about three tablespoons of red wine vinegar to add a little bit of brightness, some cilantro and serve with hot sauce. I'm going to tell you that in all honesty... Sometimes a rose con pollo during a week feels like um, more work than I'm willing to put in. So I just want to be like really transparent here that even though this probably takes 45 minutes start to finish and it is a one pot meal, you've got your peas in there, you've got rice, you've got protein. Sometimes it just feels like a lot. It might be chopping the peppers and onions and garlic Um, it might just be that like 30 minutes of cook time, even though it's hands off, you know, it's just those little mental things that sometimes some things feel easier than others. I think this recipe lives between your like desperately need something quick on a Wednesday night and a weekend meal. It's definitely not as like involved if you want to get in the kitchen and cook something big. It's, it's a little easier than that. Some quick tips to make it easy though, you can buy frozen chopped bell peppers already. And if you can only find red or green, fine, who cares? You can buy chopped onions already. You can buy frozen chopped minced garlic. Last night, I couldn't find my favorite Durat. We love those, the frozen minced garlic that tastes most like fresh. So I used from a squeeze tube, which I rarely do, but I have it in there. I used it straight from the squeeze tube. And this is the kind of recipe, it's like, you know, there are these things that people say, like, don't grate your garlic, it makes it bitter. Okay, that's true if you have a very garlic forward, like simple saute. But if you're like making a tomato sauce that's going to sit and simmer for a long time, it really doesn't matter. And there's like 10 other flavors in there. Right. Yes. Okay. Hard to This is one of those things. You've got beer. You've got a ton of spices. You've got a like longer Chicken, cooking time. Chicken, olives, yes. rice wine vinegar. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Use that tube of garlic. It saves you a ton of time. It really does make this easier. So then you really only use the chopped, pre-chopped olives. Then you're only really chopping some, maybe olives if you can't find the pre-chopped, some cilantro. It's very, it makes it a little more simple. But this is like, such a great flavorful dish. My kids love it every time I make it. And inevitably we have leftovers and I have big, big eaters. So that says something and it's great the next day. Makes a great packed lunch. You can pull the chicken off the bone, mix it in with the rice. Great like workday lunch. So this is one of our favorites. Yes. And it does like, it strikes that comfort food, but also it's starting to feel springy. And so yes. it's kind of like, Fresh flavors forward. All right. What else did you okay. cook for your family this week? This was inspired by a meal that we had in Cartagena, Colombia. It was a um, plantain bowl, basically. Mm. They had burnt coconut rice as the base, which, oh my God, so good. And then like seasoned shrimp, avocado, pickled red onion, baked plantains that they had diced up, crispy plantain chips they had crumbled. It was delicious. Again, I loved it with shrimp. My kids prefer chicken. So I made a quick and easy version using a bunch of products that were gifted to us from our friends, a dozen cousins. Mm, I am now obsessed and I'm going to buy it. They have new (laughs) seasoning sauces. Yes, they're so good. They're so good. They have one for making coconut rice. So I didn't do the burnt thing. I just cooked coconut rice using their sauce as a starter. It made it so easy. It has the coconut milk. It has flavor. It's great. You use it instead of water or in combination with water. I actually bought 
store-bought pre-marinated asada chicken, but I will give a dozen cousins another shout out because they have a Mexican pollo asada, uh, asado marinade that you can use mm-hmm. that makes this easy. Um, you can also, if you have winter, winter chicken dinner, I have one of my favorite things in the entire book is a lemon oregano marinade. You can make the same exact marinade with lime and oregano instead. And that would also work beautifully in this. And then we have a recipe for pickled onions, made those, always have those on hand, and then plantain chips, avocado. And I'm going to include links for two recipes to baked plantains because I was like, oh, we love fried sweet plantains, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. So I did some research. You can bake sweet plantains. Oh, I've never done that before. I know, me either. So every time I do something new, I use a couple of reference recipes so I can kind of like put together what the deal is. I'm going to give you guys a reference recipe from the New York Times and also from Immaculate Bites. Actually, Immaculate Bites changed her name to AfricanBites.com. Okay. Uh, But Immaculate Bites will take you there. Yeah. But there are two different methods for roasting plantains in the oven. Worked beautifully. So much easier. And I made these beautiful bowls. And so great, that was great in a bowl where like there's so much else going on and you've already cooked so many other components. I love that so much. Yes. So that was really great and really easy. And then the last thing I made this week, I did check off uh, carbonara. So yes. anytime we're at a place, anytime we're traveling and we're going to talk about this in an episode and my yeah. boys just need like a comfort meal or something familiar or they don't like anything else on the recipe, there's almost always a carbonara and a bolognese on the menu at like worldwide. <laughs> Uh, Isaac loves carbonara. Oliver loves bolognese. I made Carla Lolly Music's traditional carbonara. I'll include a link. It was great. Glossy, delicious, easy. Hit the spot. Boom. 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 Okay. What do you I, make? What'd you make? If, I think it's interesting. I mean, it's not the same, but like the plantains in the oven is like a great segue to Ella requested bean and cheese burritos. It's one of her favorite comfort meals. I also shortcutted making rice with the dozen cousins. They have a bone broth rice that you just like reheat. It's ridiculous, right? So good. It's, it's so good. Uh, like I almost ate, I was like, oh, I'm going to do one bite taste test. And I was like, oh, I'm on my fourth bite. I should probably <laughs> save rice for everyone else. Um, the packages are small. I will tell you guys that are. if you're going to order online and you either have a big family or big eaters or older eaters, like. Uh, the coconut rice, I needed two packets. Oh, I could easily and we were, like gone three. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Yeah. And it was like we were just making. But for like burrito night where I'm just trying to make four burritos and there's a, already like beans and cheese and veggies and stuff incorporated into it, it was a perfect amount of rice. In fact, I think we ended up having like one serving left over that, of rice that I had as a burrito bowl the next day. But usually I do bean burritos, like I'll cook two at a time in a nonstick skillet to get it crispy on the outside. And I wanted to have some time to make a little slaw to go with it. So I used the oven this time and like just sprayed the sheet pan. Well, I preheated the sheet pan so it would get crispy on the bottom, sprayed it with nonstick spray, put the burritos on the hot tray, sprayed them really quickly with nonstick spray. And I would say it's not the same amount of crispness and color as doing them on the stovetop, but for it to be hands-off, it was super satisfactory. And now I'm like, oh, I should probably do this in the air fryer. It might be just as easy. I don't know if I could get four burritos in my air fryer. Anyways, that was a big hit. I did super simple carrot and cabbage slaw with uh lime ranch sour cream which is literally just like sour cream <laughs> ranch seasoning and bottled lime juice yeah and everyone ate that i was very delighted can you by tell that. us about the beans what beans did you use i just honestly ca- drained a can of black beans okay. and not seasoned refried. it not yeah. refried okay. just seasoned it with my very classic like garlic onion powder smoked paprika salt pepper because that's what ella, like when ella asked for that that's what she wants she wants that easy yeah. comfort yeah can i tell you my new favorite trick actually it's not new at all it's for make it easy which is my first cookbook <laughs> a million years ago but i forgot about it and i did it recently okay. which is we use tons of cilantro but when i make just a can of beans uh i save the stems of my cilantro and rinse them too because we just use the leaves as yeah. garnish and then i you can if you want to make your life easier tie them with kitchen twine, 
but throw them in to the beans while you're reheating them. Maybe add a little bit of water so that, you know, the water cooks down and they release those stems release so much flavor into your beans. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And then you just fish them out. It's like game changer for me. Yeah. I mean, that sounds brilliant. Also great if you're doing like dry beans in the instant pot, but for like bean and cheese burrito night, I don't preheat the black beans. Oh, really? I, yeah, I like actually think it makes it easier to shape the burrito if everything is like, I might microwave them for like 30 seconds yeah. to like give, take like I love temperature. That. But um, yeah, I even like the cheese, I just mix the cheese in with the drained black beans and all those seasonings. And then I feel like it's easier to shape the burrito. So glad I mentioned this because that's great technique because I'm the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, that my I kids mean, like refried. So I, I add a little water and I flavor them and then I half mash them. And then I put it in. Yeah. Great. That, okay. Great. Different bean, bur like the thing about bean burritos, so many different techniques, right? Yeah. Uh, and awesome. then we also, I like make everyone come to the counter and be like, this is what I want. And then because I have had nights with Emmett specifically where he was like, I wanted all those things, but none of them in the burrito. <laughs> like, so you don't want a burrito. You wanted a quesadilla with yes. rice and beans on the side, but okay. 100%. <laughs> Oliver is like that too. Do you put the slaw inside the burrito? I did not this time, but sometimes we do. Yeah. Or salsa or, you know, avocado. I do all that stuff on the side yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. I took a tip from our meal planning thread in our community this last week or the week before someone was like, I'm leaning into Jenna Helwig's book, Bare Minimum Dinner. So I put two recipes from her book on my meal plan. And I hope that you're not going to be mad at me because one of them is a chicken parm burger, which I loved. I will totally make again. Both of my kids were kind of mad when I originally presented them. <laughs> with, they're like, this is not a burger. Because on the way home from the bus stop, I, Ella asked what was for dinner and I said burgers, which was not not true, but also not yeah. really true. Yeah. <laughs> and it, they get finished with a little bit of tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese. So I did like show them the burger patties before that and show them the recipe page so they could understand. And I was like, this is not a burger. And I was like, please just try it. And they both devoured them. She recommends serving them on an English muffin. They did they did sauce and cheese on the side, which they both ate, but like they didn't like the fully built thing. But can I just tell you my beef with this recipe? Yeah. Super simple. I think it's even in the section that's like minimal ingredients. Calls it a chicken parm burger. I bought Parmesan cheese because I just assumed that was part of the recipe. There's no Parmesan cheese in this recipe. So it's a chicken burger with tomato sauce and... Yeah, chicken burger, you season the um, chicken. Although I am admitting right now, just realizing I used pork, ground pork, because I had that in my freezer. <laughs> I, going, I don't know. Going. I thought, okay, and episode. then salt, uh, Italian seasoning in okay. the burger patty. And then you cook them on the stovetop, toasted English muffin, jarred sauce, and mozzarella on top. And that's it. But like, it's chicken parm. Am I wrong? I get that, like, okay, so I actually, it's parm. Yeah, I'm gonna, like, I agree with you and I'm with you at the same time. You know, chicken parm is like, I grew up in Jersey. Like, this it's like is, a whole thing. it's a yeah. whole thing, right? And it really is just like a lot of places don't have Parmesan cheese. It's like breaded chicken cutlet with tomato sauce and mozzarella. Okay. Okay. I'll, Let's pretend Jenna's that. from New Jersey. I don't know where she's from. <laughs> but I hear you. But I hear you. We're yes. not going to belabor it because it's a quick episode. But everybody be warned. If you make this recipe, don't buy it. Don't spend the money in the park. Or do because you could totally not do salt in the burger and do like gr nice. finely grated parm. And then that would give you salty and parm and help with browning. Not that it needed it, but like that's one way you could take it. I shared the picture on our feed me fam Instagram and said, I would share what the, my beef with it was. And that was it. And then Brian saw the photo and was like, I need you to make those again when I'm in town. <laughs> I was like, okay. So definitely we'll be making. So them I'll again. tell you what my beef is with that recipe. Okay. I've never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> 
that to me, if you're going to make a chicken parm like that, where you're not using the parm and you're like approximating a yes. chicken parm, like from the pizzeria, I want a breaded, I want breaded chicken. So okay. I'd rather just take like frozen breaded chicken. Yeah. Oh, that's also genius. And then do like jarred sauce, mozzarella, and put in a sandwich, like a right. hero. Yeah. And like, it's a chicken parm sandwich. My kids would love that. I think if I served them what you described, my kids would be like, why aren't we just having like a chicken parm hero? Yeah. Which would or be why are we not just having a burger? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yes. But it is a good idea and it sounds delicious. Okay. What's the next thing you made? I also recommended it to Patty, who, if you listen to the Costco episode last week, she said her family primarily buys ground turkey. And I was like, here's a oh, different yeah. way that you can Perfect. cook ground turkey or ground chicken. Okay. I also have on my meal plan. It'll be tonight's dinner, actually, because we had a change of plans last night. Her Jenna's from Bare Minimum Dinner, her tofu, teriyaki tofu, and broccoli. I okay, don't know. so you we'll haven't actually tested it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying, because here's what I wanted we to do. We need a post Sorry. I'm okay. going to go out of the bounds of the rules that we've made for these what we're cooking and eating now recipe or re episodes and shout out overnight oats. It's been a minute since I've made any and I made them now two weeks in a row. And I know this is supposed to be a quick weeknight dinners, but we all also have to eat breakfast and lunch. And I love Kelly Foster's overnight oat recipe on the kitchen. And I just really want to shout it out. Great. She uses milk and yogurt. And there's a tablespoon or two of chia seeds in the base recipe. And I think that gives it the most luxurious texture. It's That's almost, how I do mine too. It's almost like pudding yeah. afterwards, which like very basic overnight oats can be like literally milk and oats. But if you want something that's more I always do with mine with both. Yeah. Same yeah. with my chia pudding. So good. And I've been eating those all week as my breakfast. The kids have been like hit or miss morning to morning. Sometimes they just want a toasted bagel with cream cheese. But it's been awesome for me to have grab and go breakfast, especially because Brian's out of town right now. Okay. And I'm also going to say you can serve that for dinner. So, oh, boom. there you go. I still, I, you guys got yeah. seven. Yeah. You can also yeah, serve that for dinner. And if week. your kids don't like that, that is such a like filling, nourishing pre made dinner for you when you just can't. Give the kids a bagel, an English muffin. Yeah. You know. Also good like, for after school snacks. Yeah. It's just in the fridge. It's ready to roll. Totally. And it lasts a long so, time. I love it. And with that, we're going to wrap out. This new bi monthly <laughs> series is thanks in part to the generous, generous, so important, meaningful support of our Didn't I Just Feed You supporting membership. So a huge shout out to them. And thank you very much if you're part of that community. We love you guys. You can find more about becoming a supporting member at didn't I just feed you .com backslash community. And hey, if it's not the right time for that, don't worry. You can also get the links to all the recipes for this week's What We're Cooking and Eating Now by joining the free section of our community. Yay, we'd love to have you there. A huge thank you also to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. Thanks for listening. Stay sane and well-fed until next time.